There are an estimated 369,000 species of plants in the world, each with their own traits and features. There are some species, however, that are truly unusual and look nothing like you've ever seen before. Join me for today's video. We're going to count down the 15 most unique flower species in the world. Number 15. The Kadupul. The Kadupul plant, which is also commonly known as the Queen of the Night or the Dutchman's Pipe Cactus, is a stunning species that's native to Central America, but it's now been exported and cultivated all over the world. It's become so popular because of its large, fragrant flowers that bloom exclusively at night and usually only once a year. These exquisite flowers can reach almost 12 inches or 30 centimeters in diameter and have pure white petals, elongated sepals, and a large number of yellow stamens. The blooms typically last for a single night, and during this time they release a sweet fragrance that's designed to attract moths and other nighttime pollinators that will pick up the pollen and deposit it onto another plant. The Kandupul is an epiphytic cactus, which means it naturally grows on other plants and uses them for support while taking nutrients and moisture from the surrounding environment. This unique adaptation allows the plant to thrive in a range of different habitats, including tropical rainforests and desert regions. Preferring bright, indirect light and well-draining soil, they thrive in warm temperatures and are highly sought after succulents by collectors. Adequate watering and occasional fertilization during the growing season will promote healthy growth and encourage the formation of flower buds. And with proper care, each plant produces magnificent blooms that are unlike any other. Number 14. Rothschild Slipper Orchid There are countless different species of orchids, each of which is beautiful in its own way but one that truly stands out is the Rothschild's slipper orchid. Scientifically known as the Papiophyllum Rothschildinium, it's named after the famous Rothschild family, who were avid collectors of orchids, with this one being one of their favorites. Native to the highlands of Borneo, this orchid is a species that typically grows in shaded and humid environments. It features a robust stem and broad, glossy leaves that provide a stunning surrounding to its incredible blooms. The flowers are large and feature intricate patterning, but most are known for their distinctive slipper-like shape. This shoe-like pouch is an important feature of the orchid and actually acts as a natural trap for pollinators, mainly insects, to ensure successful pollination. The coloration of the flower varies from pale green to deep maroon, often with spots and stripes and shades of brown and purple. The combination of colors and patterns give each flower a truly unique appearance and makes it a prized possession among orchid enthusiasts and collectors. Cultivating them isn't easy, though, as they require very specific conditions to thrive, including a well-draining medium, moderate humidity, and diffused light. Maintaining stable temps and avoiding extreme fluctuations is crucial for their successful growth, as is proper watering, of course, and a balanced fertilizer regimen. Due to its limited natural habitat and specialized requirements, though, this orchid is considered a rare and endangered species. Conservation efforts such as habitat protection and cultivation in specialized botanical gardens are crucial to preserving this stunning orchid for future generations to admire and appreciate. Number 13. The Sweet Juliet Rose Roses are some of the most loved and treasured plants of all, and there are some people who have dedicated their entire lives to developing the perfect variety. Known as the most expensive rose ever, the Sweet Juliet Rose, officially known as Rosa Osleep, was created by renowned English rose breeder David Austin. It's a hybrid of classic English roses and old-fashioned Gallica and Alba roses, and as a result, develops blooms that are at first a delicate and soft apricot hue that then fades to a creamy champagne color as the flowers mature. This rose showcases a complex and multi-layered form with petals that are loosely arranged and have a gentle ruffling effect, adding to its graceful and romantic appeal. It's said to have cost more than $4 million in 15 years to get it right, this variety was first revealed to the world in 2006, and the rights to it were sold soon after for more than $6 million. Beyond its stunning appearance, the Sweet Juliet Rose also possesses a delightful fragrance that's often described as a rich, sweet myrrh with hints of almonds and fruity undertones, which further adds to its allure. This Sweet Juliet Rose is a vigorous and disease-resistant variety, making it a favorite among gardeners and rose enthusiasts. It typically produces large, cup-shaped flowers that bloom in clusters, creating a breathtaking display in gardens and floral arrangements, with its long stems and excellent vase life, also making it an ideal choice for cut flower arrangements and bouquets. Number 12. The Catherine Wheel Pincushion 
Leucospermum catherinae, which is usually known as the Catherine wheel pincushion or the pride of Table Mountain, is a flowering shrub that's native to the Fynbos region of South Africa, a region that's known for a climate that supports unusual plant species. It is most famous for its amazing inflorescence, which resembles a spinning Catherine wheel firework, and has flower heads that are composed of numerous small tubular florets that radiate from a central axis, which create a mesmerizing display of colors and textures. The flower can range in color from fiery oranges to reds and shades of yellow and pink, and as a result attract attention from both humans and pollinators alike. In its natural habitat, the Catherine wheel pincushion thrives in nutrient-poor soils and is adapted to survive in areas with hot, dry summers and cool, wet winters. This hardiness makes it a popular choice for gardens and landscapes with similar conditions, and it also makes an excellent cut flower, with the unique flower head adding a touch of drama and intrigue to floral arrangements. Trying to grow this species at home requires providing it with well-draining soil, full sun exposure, and protection from frost, while plenty of watering is needed during its active growing season, with a period of reduced watering being recommended during its dormant phase. If done successfully, though, there's surely no better species to add to your garden. Number 11. Parrot's Beak the parrot's beak plant, scientifically known as Lotus bertholotii, is native to the Canary Islands and is known for its intricate, claw-shaped flowers that resemble the beak of a parrot. These flowers are mainly crimson or scarlet in color with hints of yellow and orange, all of which create a striking contrast against the feathery silver-green foliage. The blooms emerge in clusters and add a touch of exotic beauty to any garden or hanging basket. Making them even more spectacular is the way that the parrot's beak plant has a trailing growth habit, so will cascade over anything that's in its way. Its long, arching stems can reach up to several feet in length, creating a visually dynamic and eye-catching display. If you want to grow one of these at home, you'll need to provide it with well-draining soil and plenty of light. It thrives in warm climates and it's sensitive to cold temperatures, so it may need to be moved indoors during the winter if you don't live in an area with a climate similar to that of the Canary Islands. Regular watering is also needed to maintain soil moisture, but be careful not to overdo it, as the plant is quite susceptible to root rot. Number 10. The Naked Man Orchid there are many plant species that take on the shape or form of something else, but perhaps the strangest of them all is the appropriately named Naked Man Orchid. Native to the regions around the Mediterranean, this species gets its common name from the fact that once fully developed, the shape of its flowers resemble a tiny naked man. Each flower spike carries several small blossoms that have a three-lobed lip that looks remarkably like a human figure. The central lobe of the lip represents the body, while the two side lobes represent outstretched arms. The flowers vary in color, ranging from pale pink to vibrant purple, and will change across the season. The species is terrestrial, meaning it grows on the ground rather than on trees or rocks like many other orchids, and it prefers nutrient-rich soil and thrives in well-drained habitats, including grassy meadows, limestone slopes, and open woodlands. This orchid is a relatively hardy and resilient plant that can withstand diverse environmental conditions, and it blooms in the spring, usually between April and June, and attract pollinators such as bees and butterflies with its enticing scent and intricate flower structure. Number 9. Chocolate Cosmos Chocolate Cosmos is an unusual flower that's native to Mexico, and as well as having a unique appearance, it's more famous for the fact that it releases a rich, chocolatey fragrance. Scientifically known as Cosmos astrosanguineus, it develops flowers that are small, daisy-like blooms that appear on long, wiry stems. Their velvety petals take on a deep burgundy or maroon color, and even though they're relatively short-lived, lasting only a few days, the plant has developed tricks to make the most of its time to attract pollinators. Its smell, which is just like that of dark chocolate, brings butterflies and bees from all around. But despite smelling delicious, this fragrance comes from the plant's petals and not from cocoa or chocolate itself, so it doesn't taste of chocolate, and the plant is actually moderately poisonous to humans. Mentions of this species have been found as far back as the times of the pre-Columbian civilizations, but more recently the chocolate cosmos was thought to have become extinct in the wild. It now has, however, been reintroduced through cultivation, and is not only seen in various places in the wild, but in botanical gardens across South America, where it's prized for its appearance and, of course, its unusual fragrance. Number 8. Blue Puya The Blue Puya, scientifically known as Puya berteroniana, is a species that's native to the arid regions of Chile. 
It's recognizable for its sharp, sword-like leaves that grow in dense rosettes, which take on a silvery gray color and are covered in a layer of protective spines. If this isn't eye-catching enough for you, the plant also produces incredible flower spikes that rise high above these rosettes and are a vibrant shade of electric blue, creating a striking contrast against the gray-green foliage beneath them. The blooms are arranged in a dense cluster along the spike, and these attract hummingbirds and other pollinators who are rewarded with a great source of nectar. The spikes along the plant ensure that only certain species are able to reach the nectar, which are more likely to be ones that will pollinate other blue puyas, rather than opportunistically trying to eat one. It's a hardy and resilient plant that will withstand dry and harsh conditions, but much prefers well-drained soil and a full sun exposure, which it will require if you want it to thrive. If you want to grow one yourself, it'll be tricky to begin with, and the best bet is to place it in a rock garden or a dry area of the garden, but once it's been established, it's relatively low maintenance and just requires occasional watering and pruning to remove the spent flower spikes. Moving on to number seven, the Jade Vine. The Jade Vine, it's a stunning species of flowering vine that's native to the tropical rainforests of the Philippines. It's known for its unique and vibrant flower clusters and develops pendant blooms that hang in long, cascading clusters and resemble vine-like tendrils. The flowers are an impressive shade of turquoise or teal, which is a color that's rarely found in the natural world, and it's this vivid and unusual coloration along with the delicate claw-shaped petals that attract pollinators, particularly birds and butterflies. The foliage of the jade vine is just as stunning, with its glossy, compound leaves that are made up of small leaflets. The foliage provides an attractive surrounding to these spectacular flowers, further enhancing the appeal of this remarkable plant. Unfortunately, due to habitat loss and overcollection, the jade vine is considered a vulnerable species in its natural environment, and conservation efforts and methods of controlled propagation have become essential in preserving this plant's beauty and preventing its decline. If acquired from a sustainable source, the jade vine can be a challenging species to grow, as it requires warm temperatures and high humidity, just as it would have in its natural tropical climate. Providing it with well-draining soil, regular watering, and partial shade is essential for its successful growth, and you may need to support the vine to help guide its growth and showcase the pendant flower clusters to their full effect. Number 6. The Ghost Orchid the ghost orchid is a legendary orchid species that's captured the imagination of botanists and nature enthusiasts alike for hundreds of years. It's native to the swamps and humid forests of Cuba and Florida, and it's famous for its ghostly appearance, with its delicate white and almost transparent flowers resembling ethereal spirits. Unlike most other orchids, this species completely lacks leaves and instead relies solely on its roots to absorb nutrients and moisture from the air. These long, wiry roots cling to the trunks of trees and further add to the mystique of the plant, whereby the blooms appear to float in midair. The flowers of the ghost orchid are small and inconspicuous, measuring about two inches or several centimeters in diameter. They also release a subtle fragrance that's often described as a combination of jasmine, honeysuckle, and citrus. Due to its limited distribution and specific habitat requirements, the ghost orchid is considered a threatened species. Conservation efforts such as habitat preservation and the enforcement of protective measures are crucial for the survival of this extraordinary orchid. And it's not as if it can be easily propagated in gardens either. That's because it's notoriously difficult to cultivate, and it's rarely seen outside of its natural habitat. This is due to its picky growth requirements such as high humidity, diffuse light, and specific fungal associations that combine to make it almost impossible to grow successfully. Consequently, it's become a symbol of rarity and beauty, sought after by orchid enthusiasts and collectors. Number 5. The Star Flower Stapelia grandiflora, commonly known as the star flower or Zulu giant, is an unusual succulent plant that's native to South Africa. Classed as a low-growing succulent, it develops fleshy, four-angled stems and distinctive star-shaped flowers that will often grow to a surprisingly impressive size of up to almost 10 inches or 25 centimeters in diameter. When fully grown, they take on a deep maroon color with raised, hairy margins and a textured star-like pattern. While visually stunning, it's the flower's scent that truly sets it apart. Rather than trying to attract birds or butterflies, this plant targets flies and beetles, and to do so, it emits an odor that's designed to replicate the smell of decaying organic matter, and more specifically, rotting flesh. 
If you ever see one growing, it's probably best to admire it from a distance, because it's almost impossible to stay close to one for very long before you begin to uncontrollably retch at the foul smell. Unsurprisingly, this means it's also not the most popular of plants for home cultivation, but it is fairly easy to look after if you want one. It requires well-draining soil, bright indirect light, and a dry environment to thrive, and it will certainly be a species that very few of your guests will never have seen. Number 4. Bleeding Heart The Asian Bleeding Heart, which is native to regions across Siberia, northern China, Korea, and Japan, is a herbaceous perennial that belongs to the poppy family. It grows to a height of 2 to 3 feet or just under a meter and features finely divided fern-like foliage that emerges in the spring. The leaves just act to create a setting for the flowers, though, which are the true stars of this plant. Each pendant bloom dangles from the arching stems and resembles a heart with a drop of blood hanging at the bottom. The outer petals are usually pink or white, while the inner petals form a distinctive protruding shape that gives the flower its unique appearance. The delicate flowers bloom in late spring or early summer and can continue to grace the garden for several weeks. Beyond their visual appeal, bleeding heart flowers carry symbolic meanings. They're often associated with love, romance, and compassion, making them popular choices for weddings, anniversary celebrations, and other special occasions. The name bleeding heart itself reflects the flower's perceived resemblance to a heart dripping with love. Because of their stunning appearance, it's quite common to see bleeding hearts being grown in gardens around the world, and they're fairly simple to take care of. They prefer partial to full shade, and direct sunlight can scorch the delicate foliage, so the soil should be fertile, moist, and well-drained. Regular watering and mulching help to maintain the plant's moisture requirements, and in colder regions they may benefit from a layer of mulch or protective covering to help keep them warm. Number 3. Rainbow Eucalyptus as far as colorful plant species go, there's perhaps none as visually striking as the rainbow eucalyptus, which is native to the rainforests of Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. Standing tall and reaching heights of up to 200 feet or 61 meters, the rainbow eucalyptus is different from most other trees in the way that it sheds its bark. As the tree matures, patches of the outer bark peel away to reveal a remarkable palette of colors beneath, with this exposed inner bark showcasing shades of green, blue, orange, maroon, and even purple. The colors change over time and create a living work of art that evolves with the tree's growth. The reason behind this phenomenon lies in the bark structure and the tree's growth process. The outer bark of the rainbow eucalyptus is thin and constantly peeling in irregular patches, and as these patches are shed, the newly exposed inner bark appears in bright, fresh hues. Over time, the colors transform and intensify, creating a striking contrast against the surrounding green foliage. The vibrant bark of this tree serves a purpose beyond aesthetics. The different colors are thought to provide some degree of protection against sun damage and extreme temperature fluctuations, and additionally, the peeling bark helps the tree to shed parasites, fungi, and other potential threats, ensuring its health and vitality. These trees thrive in tropical and subtropical regions with high rainfall and humidity, and they prefer well-drained soils and ample sunlight to support their growth. Due to its specific environmental requirements, the tree is primarily found in its native habitats, although it has been introduced in other regions with similar climates, with Hawaii being a particularly great place to grow them. Number 2. Western Underground Orchid Now, you normally think of orchids as developing stunning displays above ground, where they can attract pollinators and find the nutrients that they need. But there's one species that does things very differently and was one of the most recent to have been discovered. The Western Underground Orchid is found exclusively in Western Australia, and what sets it apart is that it spends its entire life cycle underground, hidden from view and shrouded in mystery. It's one of just a handful of known species of subterranean orchids, and as such it lacks leaves, stems, and the vibrant flowers typically associated with the plants. Instead, it develops a small, inconspicuous flower bud that remains hidden beneath the soil's surface, an adaptation that allows it to survive in harsh, nutrient-poor environments, such as sandy soils and underground limestone caves. The orchid relies on a symbiotic relationship with fungi to obtain nutrients for its survival. These fungi form mycorrhizal associations with the orchid's roots and provide it with essential nutrients and water. The orchid, in return, supplies the fungi with carbohydrates that it produces through photosynthesis, a relationship that's vital for the survival of both species. 
Due to that subterranean habitat, this orchid is an elusive and rarely seen plant. In fact, it wasn't discovered until 1928, when a farmer accidentally unearthed one while digging. Since then, it's fascinated botanists and plant enthusiasts around the world. Due to loss of habitat, though, and land development and illegal collection in recent years, along with the fact that it's now known for certain how wide a range they grow across, the orchid is now listed as critically endangered. Encountering one in its natural habitat is a true privilege. Its hidden existence and extraordinary adaptation to underground life serve as a reminder to the wonders and complexities of the natural world. The Western Underground Orchid, it stands as a symbol of the beauty and resilience of life, even in the most unexpected and hidden places. Number 1. The Beehive Ginger Native to Southeast Asia, particularly Malaysia and Indonesia, Beehive Ginger is a bizarre-looking plant that's renowned for its striking cone-shaped inflorescence that resembles a beehive or a pine cone. The tightly clustered bracts that encase the flower give the plant its common name, and these bracts can vary in color, ranging from vibrant red to orange or pink or creamy yellow and green. The actual flowers of beehive ginger are small and inconspicuous. They're nestled within these bracts, which serve as protective structures for the developing flowers and gradually change color as the plant matures, creating an interesting visual display. It's the cone formations that are responsible for attracting pollinators to the plant, and their complex shape means that only the insects they want, like bees, are able to penetrate the exterior to reach the nectar and pollen that's hidden within. As well as being a stunning plant, beehive ginger has a cultural significance in traditional medicine and culinary practices. In certain regions, the rhizomes of the plant are used in herbal remedies for various ailments, including digestive issues and respiratory disorders. And the tender shoots and young inflorescences are sometimes used in local cuisine, adding a mild ginger flavor and a touch of visual flair to dishes. Although typically found in rainforests, beehive ginger can be cultivated in places with tropical or subtropical conditions. The species thrives in rich, well-drained soil and partial shade, although it can tolerate some direct sunlight. With proper care and attention, beehive ginger can be a resilient and rewarding addition to a garden, attracting plenty of bees and butterflies. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.